All right. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Julie Hertz and I'm a representative from PACAC. And um, on behalf of PACAC and StriveScan, we are happy to um, welcome you to the Virtual College, Ex College Explorations Program for Pennsylvania students. Um, this afternoon, uh, the session that we are running is titled The Benefits of Attending Small Private Liberal Arts Colleges. Um, and we're joined today by three great uh, Pennsylvania institutions who will all introduce themselves in a moment. Um, just to clarify, the, the webinar today um, is being recorded. Um, any attendees should know that their microphones and cameras are turned off. Um, in order to ask questions, you may use the Q&A button to type any questions that you have. Um, there are lots more sessions on the PACAC website, www.pacac.org. Um, and please also know that this, um, again, this session is being recorded and recordings will be available at pacact.org slash virtual. Um, at this time, I am going to go ahead and take my screen share down and turn the presentation over to uh, my admissions colleagues to go ahead and begin the, the program. Good afternoon. My name is Travis Hoshauer, um, and we are going to be presenting the benefits of attending a small liberal arts college. Um, with me today um, is Mark from Albright College and Chelsea from Arcadia, and they will introduce themselves in just a moment. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Detterline, as Travis uh, said. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission here at Albright College. Uh, and so today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, each of our individual colleges and kind of give you an indication of why um, it might benefit you to uh, envision yourself at a small private liberal arts college. Um, <clears throat> so just to give you a little information specific to Albright, we're located in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, so that's about an hour northwest of Philly. Um, we are a smaller institution, so you're talking about 1,600 undergrads. Um, most of our students are going to uh, live on campus. Uh, we do have a four-year residency requirement, unless you're a student that's eligible to commute. Um, so we do have about a 90-10 split when it comes to residents and commuters. Um, some of our popular programs, um, a lot of these programs are growing. Um, biology, uh, that's, that's a huge program. That's gonna be a big program at a lot of places. Um, that's our second most popular uh, major here on campus. Um, we do a lot of pre-med and pre-vet. Uh, we also have pre-dental um, for students that are interested in dentistry. Um, so the, the pre-med and pre-vet programs, they're both pre-professional programs. Uh, so all that means is that it's not technically your major, you're gonna major in biology or, or chemistry or um, typically something in the sciences. Um, and then you're gonna get an advisor who will, who will assist you in figuring out uh, what your next steps are as far as applying to medical school, getting into medical school or veterinary school or whatever it is that you may be interested in. Um, fashion, merchandising and design, um, Albright is consistently ranked nationally among small private liberal arts colleges when it comes to fashion merchandising and design. Um, we have alumni working at a lot of your uh, big name kind of industry places that you would think of when you think of fashion. So uh, Michael Kors, Kate Spade, Vogue, uh, Macy's, places like that. Uh, music industry studies uh, is another giant program that's, that's exploding all over the place. Uh, it allows students to kind of um, continue what their craft is, whether you play music, you produce music, you're into DJing, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it also gives you an indication of how the, the industry works. Um, one of our most notable alumni um, through our music program uh, is going to be uh, the vice president uh, of Atlantic Records. Um, education, that's a big program. We have a four plus one, so you can stick around for an additional year uh, and get your master's degree. Uh, we have both ed, uh, uh, elementary ed and secondary ed. Um, and we also have special, special education if you're interested in that. Um, and then psychology, there's two routes. You can take our psychology program. You can take it the clinical route um, or you can take it uh, more of your uh, social work type of route, um, our child and family studies program. <clears throat> we are the lions uh, and our motto is truth and justice.
And my name is Travis Hasha. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions for Counselor Relations here at Alvernia University. We are located in Reading, Pennsylvania, about an hour north of Philadelphia. And we serve traditional students, much like many of you will be, um, from over 25 different states, international students from 14 countries, veterans, adult learners, and graduate students. Um, Alvernia was founded in 1958, and we're really guided by the Franciscan ideas um, of knowledge joined with love. We serve about 1,500 undergraduate students with 3,000, including our graduate and online um, students as well. Um, and we really embrace our core values with helping all students become ethical leaders uh, with a moral courage to serve. We've recently been recognized as a College of Distinction for student engagement, equity and inclusion, career development, support of our military members, and for programs such as business, nursing, and education, which each ranked as outstanding for their rigorous curriculum. So um, within those programs, um, they are of course some of our most popular, but then we also have nursing, occupational therapy, doctor physical therapy, three plus three, athletic training, healthcare science, and business and communications. Um, our business and communications programs are moving to our downtown college town center, um, which is going to house a business incubator, a TV studio, um, and various other student-centered um, activities. There's also going to be a living and learning environment downtown um, where you can live in the downtown area, you can eat in the downtown area, um, and then go to your classes in that downtown center as well. Engineering is our newest program that we just added, um, and that program will also be taking place downtown, and we have a lot of partnerships um, as well with Brentwood, UGI, Mitsubishi, um, and various other um, companies as well. Um, but regardless of your major, all of our students are going to benefit from a rigorous liberal arts curriculum, um, and that's what we call SEARCH. So this curriculum helps our students develop critical thinking skills, become effective communicators, hone in on their writing skills, and develop cultural competency skills for an ever-evolving global society. Um, outside of the classroom, we have a lot of different clubs and organizations, um, whether you want to get involved in the student government organization, uh, campus activities board, um, or maybe a major specific club or organization. Um, but all of those are definitely ways that you can get involved along with athletics. We have about 28 you know, collegiate sports here at Alvernia University, um, ranging from ice hockey to esports, which is coming in the fall of 2021, um, to wrestling, to football, um, baseball, softball, you name it. Um, and then we also encourage real world learning experiences for our students through service learning, internships, clinical experiences, community service, and networking with our talented alumni. Our mascot is the Golden Wolves, um, and our motto is to learn to love and to serve. Hi, my name is Chelsea. Um, I'm one of our admissions counselors at Arcadia University. Um, in addition to being an admissions counselor, I also graduated from Arcadia, so it's near and dear to my heart. Um, so we're located in Glenside, Pennsylvania, just north of Philadelphia. Um, so in terms of having the comforts of living in the suburbs um, with um, cute uh, fall festivals and food truck festivals um, and greater parking options. Um, we are just a 30, 20 to 30 minute train ride into Center City, Philly. So for internships, for um, visiting museums, for days when they have, you know, students pay what you want um, to College Fest, um, which is a, a fun um, experience in September. There's a lot of different options for you and a lot of great benefits of being close to Philadelphia. Um, we are a smaller school, so we have about 2,100 undergraduate students, about 1,300 graduate students. So with that, it's not necessarily like high school. You've grown up with these people and um, you've known them since kindergarten. Um, there's enough new faces that it doesn't feel like the same people over and over again, um, but small enough that you'll really be able to find your people and you know, find those, those friends for life. Um, with the, small, with the smaller school, um, our average class size is about 14. Um, so in your introductory classes that first year, your first year seminar, you'll have about 25 to 30 students. But then after that, you'll have about 14 students. So you'll really get to know your professors. They'll know you as more than just a number. So in terms of having solid references, having 
um, networking and internship opportunities of having to somebody to go to because you know their office hours and you're having a rough day and just need to talk to somebody, they're there for you. Um, so that's one of the great benefits of, of being at a smaller school. Um, some of our most popular programs, um, the first one would be biology. Um, and with that, we have um, a variety of different pre-professional programs. Um, we do have a doctorate of physical therapy assured admissions program um, and a, a graduate program for a physician's assistant. Um, and both of those are nationally ranked. Uh, another one would be psychology, which would lead to either of those two options as well as other pre-professional programs. Um, next would be history and political science. And that is a wide variety of options for you. Um, and the, the next biggest one would be art and design. And that's everything from graphic design to studio arts um, to um, scientific illustration, which combines um, biology and um, typical illustration, uh, which is really popular. And we're one of uh, the few schools on the East Coast that offer that. Um, our, uh, with our, our curriculum, you're able to kind of pick and choose what you want. So let's, let's say you're interested in biology with whatever that looks like, but you have a love for creative writing or you have a love for theater and you wanna get involved in theater in some way, um, whether taking that on as a minor or just doing that for fun on the side, um, you're able to kind of pick and choose, but still have the structure and still graduate within four years, which is really important. Um, our mascot is the knight, as you can see in the, the bottom of this um, slide. Um, we're very proud, um, we have a lot of spirit. Um, there are about 26 uh, athletic teams at this point in time on the, on the D3 level. Um, the newest ones are ice hockey and eSports. Ice hockey starts this upcoming season and eSports we started last year with uh, six games that we offer. Um, and with that, you really have this great bounce of being a, a student athlete. Um, we don't have a motto specifically, but I like to think of our motto as having been a student and now working at Arcadia, um, kind of just like pursue what you're passionate about. So whether it's joining clubs, starting a new club, um, studying abroad for either a week or a semester or a full academic year, um, or getting involved in a local charity, just do what you pursue, do what you love, pursue what you love, and we'll support you along the way. All right, so there are certainly, um, beyond everything that we've told you already, there are some similarities between uh, the three institutions here today um, that are going to provide you with a bunch of different resources. Um, and, and we're gonna tell you about a, a couple of the different ways that uh, small private liberal arts colleges could really help you um, expand your horizons, jump out of your comfort zone a little bit um, and, and kind of take the world on. So one of those is gonna be various study abroad opportunities. Um, <clears throat> study abroad uh, is easily um, one of, uh, from when I was in college, I did not study abroad. It's easily one of my largest regrets. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to study abroad if you could. Um, we're going to have, uh, these three institutions are gonna put you in a position to go all over the world. Um, albeit when there's not a, a world health crisis. Um, but so uh, studying abroad is going to open up your eyes to different places all over the world. You're gonna really be in a position um, sometimes to even get an internship while you're abroad um, and really just experience a whole different culture um, from what you're used to. Um, a lot of times you're gonna have a lot of variation in the kinds of trips that you can take advantage of as well. So um, sometimes those can be shorter trips that maybe are 10 days or two weeks long um, that are faculty led. So you get credit for going on them. Um, sometimes you're talking month long um, over the summer, uh, or a lot of times students are gonna take advantage of the traditional uh, study abroad for an entire semester. Um, all of our all of our campuses are going to have resources available to you to help uh, help you figure out where you want to study abroad, um, what time you want to do it at, uh, and and what uh, opportunities you're going to take advantage of while you're abroad. Um, <clears throat> kind of going hand in hand with that is an emphasis on experiential learning. Um, so uh, studying abroad in and of itself is experiential learning. You're you're immersing yourself into a different culture um, that you haven't experienced before. Um, but experiential learning can be a lot of different things. Um, it can be research, it can be uh, internship opportunities, it can, it can really range in that aspect. Um, and similar to study abroad, uh, our college campuses are really going to have resources for you to help you figure out um, where you're going to get that internship or um, if you're going to do a research project uh, and things like that. 
Um, internships are obviously going to be a great way for you to figure out uh, if you're interested in a, in a in the field that you think you're interested in, or sometimes you'll get an internship and you'll find that you really hated that internship. Um, and that is equally as valuable because that gives you some information on what it is that you're going to be looking for um, when you enter the workforce uh, full time. Um, a personal attention uh, to on campus and in the classroom. This is huge. Um, th this is really the kind of thing um, that can that can really be the difference between whether or not a student succeeds in college, um, I think. And so your ability to connect with different faculty, different staff, different students on campus uh, will will really give you um, a, a, a better opportunity to make sure that you, you have the knowledge that you need, make sure you understand the content that you're studying um, and so on. Uh, as, um, as Chelsea suggested earlier, small class sizes are gonna be very common at, at our institutions. Um, it's not unheard of to have classes that have 10, 15, 20 students in them. Uh, and in that situation, you're really going to uh, be in a position to get to know the students that you're in class with, get to know your professor. Your professor is gonna to get to know you. Um, and, and that can lead to a lot of different things um, that can link back to the emphasis on experiential learning. Maybe you have a professor that you get to know pretty well and, and they hear about an internship and they're like, hey, you know what, Johnny, I think you'd be great at this internship. You should apply for it. Um, they're, they're, that's just one small, very, very small example of, of how a personal attention on campus um, can, can really blossom into something uh, more important and more exciting. Now I'm going to talk a little bit bouncing off of that um, classroom experience that Mark was just talking about in, in the small and personal attention side of things. You're also going to get a very well-rounded education um, at a small liberal arts um, institution like all of us are. Um, you're going to take a lot of courses that are outside of your major. So you might be a um, biology major, but you're still going to take, you know, an English or communications course, uh, a math course, um, you know, maybe an arts history course, a language, um, maybe you'll take a philosophy course at some point in the road too. Um, and the benefit to that is that you might really find something that you didn't think you'd love, um, but end up loving anyway. Um, so I know for my personal, um, from my personal experiences, um, I started out as a psychology major and, you know, I really wasn't sure that I liked it. I liked it a lot more in high school than I did in college. Um, and I was able to take a communic uh, communications course and I ended up switching my major because I was using it as an elective, but I found a love within it. Um, so it was a really good move and it was really beneficial for me to be able to take you know, courses outside of my major um, and not really be pushed back on time or anything like that because it was going to be an elective anyway, so I was gonna have to take it anyway. Um, so taking it and finding that I actually loved it um, really worked in my favor. The same can be said um, for minors, you know, you might take a digital media course and really like that professor or really like that type of class um, but you might be, you know, a biology major. If you take, you know, enough digital media courses to kind of fill up some electives, you might add a minor in there as well. So it really just diversifies your um, education and, and your knowledge pool um, and allows you to really hone in on um, finding yourself through a lot of different areas of education and, and also learning a lot of different coursework and and topics that otherwise you wouldn't have studied. You know, you might not have studied, taken that English or communications course being a biology major if you didn't have to take it um, as a, a general requirement. So each of us have our own different programs um, within the liberal arts education and as to what courses you're taking, how you're taking them. Um, but it is guaranteed that you'll receive a well-rounded education throughout that. 
We all do offer merit-based scholarships. Um, so although we are division three schools and do not author, offer athletic scholarships, um, your merit will determine um, what kind of scholarship you get. So when we talk about merit, we talk about, um, for the most part, you know, what you're submitting maybe with your application or process or, or anything like that. So your high school transcripts, um, we're looking at, you know, your courses, how, um, how you did from your freshman to your junior year for the most part, um, your GPA, um, the types of courses you're taking. Are you taking honors courses? Are you taking AP courses? Are you taking college prep courses? You know, all of that is gonna come into play throughout um, that merit-based scholarship evaluation. And then of course your test scores as well if, if you um, submit those depending on whether you are looking at a test option or a, um, or a test required school. So those test scores will come into play as well. And you know, the higher your GPA, um, high school transcript quality, um, classes that you're taking, you know, how rigorous they are. And, and then the higher your SAT or ACT scores, um, oftentimes then you can find yourself kind of in a higher um, merit-based scholarship setting. And obviously those numbers all range um, from a variety of different scholarships for all of us. Um, but we all do have um, merit-based scholarships um, in play when, when you get awarded one. And then you can also stay tuned for you know, financial aid packages coming down the road, um, which will list out some other uh, areas on that as well. And all of us do have a pretty vibrant campus life. So there's always something to do, um, even though we are small liberal arts schools, um, I think the quality that we all offer our students to do activities in and residential stuff and, and everything like that, there is an abundance of activities. Um, we all have plenty of different clubs and organizations that you can get involved in. And if there isn't a club or organization that you are interested in, uh, you can certainly create that club or organization if there's interest there. Um, so it really offers a lot to do. And we're all doing everything we can right now as well to keep our students busy um, with any type of activities, whether, you know, it, I'm sure we all have bingo and I'm sure bingo is our most um, prized activity amongst all of our colleges um, and universities because college bingo is just something like you've never seen before. Um, and students really, um, really enjoy that. Um, experience. And of course, then there's also um, sports games, so football games or baseball games or soccer games, anything um, that kind of gets you out on maybe a Saturday or Sunday afternoon and enjoy the fresh air um, that, you know, the stadiums have to offer. So there's always something to do, whether you are um, looking to just get involved in a club or organization or whether you're just looking to go watch a game or a movie. Um, or hang out, you know, on the quad. Um, I'm sure all of our quads look beautiful on a nice spring uh, day in May when everybody is kind of getting ready before finals to relax um, and enjoy the nice sunny weather. Awesome. And speaking of athletics and speaking of Division Three, so yes, yeah, so we're all Division Three athletics. We all have the normal. Um, athletics teams that you're looking for. So yes, they'll get you out on a Saturday or Sunday, um, but during the week, um, you as a division three athlete, you really have this great balance between being a student and an athlete. Um, and since it's in that order, student athlete, that means that your academics come first. So it's not like you're, you're going to school and all you're doing is you know going to practice, going to additional strength and conditioning time, um, playing your games, and then maybe studying on the side and then graduating after four years and saying, what now? Um, so by being, by, by being a student athlete, um, you're able to pursue the sport that you love while also uh, gaining a genuine education so that when you graduate, you can say, yes, I got to pursue what I loved, love playing my sport and, and building those, those team bonds, but I'm prepared for the real world and I'm ready to get a job. Because ultimately you're going to college to get a job and you're going to get a job by going to one of our universities or colleges. Um, so within that, um, let's say that um, you have a an away game that you have to travel to and you, you let your teachers know ahead of time. Um, with the smaller schools, um, our professors are really understanding and will work with you to either reschedule tests that you have coming up, work with you to have tutoring outside of that time, or um, 
be able to just come in for just additional help on the side. Um, so again, academics come first um, with this. Um, and also a benefit of being a Division Three athlete is that, let's say that you, um, so you come and you have a merit-based scholarship, but you tear your ACL and you're not able to play your sport anymore. It's, I mean, it's a big deal to your sport, but it's not a big deal to your scholarship because your scholarship's not going away. If you're to be a Division One or Division Two athlete and you are on this athletic scholarship and you tear your ACL, you're not able to play anymore. Um, that's not necessarily the case, unfortunately. Um, so it is a great benefit of going to one of our small liberal arts schools. Um, another advantage of going to one of our schools is that um, we are in a fantastic location. Um, so whether you're um, at um, Alvernian Albright and you have access to Reading for the weekend or for evening activities, um, or Arcadia where you have the, the perks of being in a suburb but being close to Philly. And um, we have this really great mix of urban and suburban life. Um, so like with on, um, from the, the campuses, you're able to access, um, you know, the great outdoors, you're able to go hiking on a weekend if that's what you're interested in or um, check out different parks um, or other activities like that. But then you also have the perks of just going to the city. So it's like that Hannah Montana song, it's like the best of both worlds. Um, but in addition to just the immediate vicinity, um, we're both within, uh, all three of us are within two to three hours um, of Baltimore, Washington, DC, um, the Jersey Shore, which is great, you know, for a, a random weekday beach trip um, uh, and New York as well. So with that, um, whether it's um, trip supported by the school itself, because I know that um, our schools will sometimes with classes or just sometimes with like first year um, orientation opportunities will send you to one of those three bigger cities um, or we'll take a beach club or we'll take a beach club. We'll take a beach trip with a, a, a club that you're in, in, involved in. Um, there's just a lot of different perks to the, the locations where our schools are. Um, but Moving on to the next slide. So several of you have sent in um, questions throughout this time. Um, and here on this slide is our contact information uh, for both Mark Travis and myself. So please don't hesitate to email or call with any questions that you might have. Um, so the first question was sent to the group in general. Um, so I'll open this up to, um, to the two of you as well. So the first question is, does your school require an essay? Um, and if so, what should I write about? So Travis, if you want to start us off. Sure. So we have a few different types of applications that you can fill out. If you're filling out the Common App and the Alverni application, though, we do require the essay. Um, if you're doing the Alverni application, we ask that your essay is on community service. And if you do the uh, Common application, we ask that you do any essay that you want. So if you've already um, written an essay that you want to use, you can use that. Um, if you want to write about something new, you can do that. Um, we do have two specific questions on the common application, but they're not really essay questions. They're more like short answer. So the one would be like, why Alvernia and the other one would be um, why are you interested in pursuing whatever major you're interested in? Yeah, and I mean, for us, um, we don't require an essay. Um, certainly, if you are um, if you're using the Common App, I mean, you're probably going to type one up, um, do some sort of personal statement. So, I mean, we'll take those and, and we'll look at them. Um, what I think, what I think ends up happening, and, and guys, uh, uh, Travis and Chelsea, let me know if I'm speaking out of term. But I think all of us kind of uh, review applications in a holistic sort of way. Um, so the idea there is being um, all of the information that you can give us um, is going to be valuable. Uh, in your process. So uh, like I said, even though we don't require an essay, feel free to shoot us an essay um, and, and we'll definitely take it into account when we're, when we're reviewing your application. Yeah, I would definitely echo that. Um, so you didn't speak out of turn, Mark, you are good to go. Um, just like uh, Albright, Arcadia does not require an essay. Um, this year we are a test optional, however. So if you are, if you don't submit your test scores, we are asking just for another piece of information. And that can be um, a short essay, just talking about like why Arcadia um, and why you think you'll be successful in your major. Um, we, part of the reason why we went test optional was um, that students weren't able to take either um, the SAT or ACT. Um, or maybe you took it in the spring right before COVID hit and wanted to retake it because you're not happy with your scores. But at this point in time, you're like, is it even worth it? Um, so just help help our students um, put their best foot forward. Um, we are optional for the essay, but if you're going test optional, um, that is one thing that you can submit in lieu of that. Um, another question that came in, 
Okay, so tips for choosing a school or narrowing down your options. Mark, you want to start this one? Sure, I'll start this one. Um, all right, here, I'll give you a couple of tips. Um, so, so one of my tips is don't have a list of 15 schools. Um, you're never, there are not 15 schools that you can picture yourself at, I promise. Um, narrow that list down to uh, a couple, five, six, maybe seven, um, 15 is too many, 10 is too many. Um, that's one, that's one tip, um, that I'd like to provide you with. Um, uh, what were, what was the other part of the question, Chelsea? I'm sorry. <laughs> as soon as you said tips, I was like, oh, this is my favorite one. Let me tell them. <laughs> yeah. Um, narrowing down your options and just choosing a school. Oh, and narrowing down it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I, I think, I think part of it, I think, um, it, as admission professionals and as, as people in your life, um, talk to you, um, adults, uh, your, your older siblings, things like that. Um, there's really an emphasis put on fit. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard, heard people say that. Um, I think fit is, is an important piece. Um, certainly, uh, you want to make sure, um, that you don't feel uncomfortable on campus. Um, you want to make sure that the kind of students on campus are the kind of students that you can envision yourself, um, spending four years with, um, food is an important part of it that, that, uh, I think some people sometimes neglect to consider. Um, but you do have to eat on campus for four years to so definitely make sure that the food is good. Um, but like I said, a lot of it comes down to fit. Um, a, a lot of times you'll walk onto a college campus um, and, and, and you'll kind of have a feeling of, of whether or not um, you could picture yourself there. Um, but in, when it comes to narrowing it down, I mean, there are some very basic steps that you could take um, to narrowing it down um, quite a bit. So are you looking for something that's rural? Are you looking for something suburban? Are you looking for something in the city? Um, that's going to cut your options right from the jump. Um, do you want a big school? Do you want a little school? Um, does the school that you're looking at have the program that you're interested in? Um, so these are very basic steps that you can take um, that's really going to narrow down your search um, really before you, even, before you even get started. Um, and then visit, visit, visit. Um, I know COVID has made that very difficult uh, to do, um, but when there's not a, a world health crisis um, and it's easier to visit campuses, um, definitely uh, make sure that you get yourself on that campus so that you can see um, what it's like and, and how people interact with one another and, and things like that. Anything to add, Travis? I feel like Mark just covered everything. Yeah, I think Mark, you did a really good job at covering everything. Um, I definitely like to um, repeat, visit campus. Um, getting your feet on campus is kind of one of the most important things that you can do. You wouldn't test drive or you wouldn't buy a car without test driving it, um, and, or you wouldn't look at a house without, um, or you wouldn't buy a house without looking at it first. Um, so those are some of the really key points, I think, um, in the college search process. So a good place to start right now is probably a virtual visit of some sort or a, a Zoom call with your admissions counselor because another really important tip would be keeping in contact. You know, we like to hear from you. Um, you probably like to hear from us. Um, and just touching base every now and then to just check on any updates or if you have questions about your financial aid package when you get it or uh, questions about maybe you're in a dual enrollment course and you want to know what it would transfer in as if it would transfer in or um, so any question there's no question too big or too small that you can ask us um, we'll get to the bottom of it um, regardless of what it is um, and you know be be open and transparent too if you have concerns um, we want to hear them we don't want you to be wondering um, or or guessing about what something might be. You know, we're here as a resource to you. Um, so anything that you need, um, you know, you can use us for that. Awesome, and as a, a follow-up question to that is, are your schools offering in-person tours at this time? Um, I'll start, so Arcadia is offering in-person tours at this time, um, several going um, several different times a week um, with 10 a.m., 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. time slots. Um, but with that, you do have to pre-register for the event. Um, and we are enforcing, um, you know, COVID regulations. So there is distanced, uh, uh, socially distancing um, procedures that we're observing. We're checking temperature before you come in. Um, and then everybody's keeping masks on while we uh, conduct the tour and the information session. Um, I'll talk to you guys.
Yeah, um, so the, the uh, largely the same for us. Um, we are offering in-person um, visits right now. Uh, again, uh, following all kind of COVID-19 regulations, social distancing, all that good stuff. Uh, masks are absolutely required. Um, you will have to, um, we're also going to uh, have you sign our campus care compact, which just essentially says that you accept kind of uh, coming onto campus and, and agree to abide by uh, our social distancing guidelines and things like that. Now, Vernie is also offering in-person um, individual campus visits at 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m., Monday through Friday. We're also offering a drive-in open house uh, this weekend. It's our second one. Um, it is a 50s drive-in theme, so you don't even have to get out of your car. If you don't want to, um, if you want to take a tour around campus, you are certainly able to do that beforehand. Um, that'll be an individual tour, um, but we will have that drive in after that um, Saturday night. Um, so if you're interested, you can always hop over to our website to register for that. We'll also be exploring some other virtual um, formats for visiting this fall. We currently do virtual visits um, at noon on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then we'll also explore some virtual open houses um, for the remainder of the fall. I love that 50s theme, that is so fun. We might steal that. Um, so the, the last question that came in, I believe this is just the, the last one for the session, uh, is what is something special or unique about your school that maybe hasn't been mentioned yet? Um, and I would say confidently that ours is we have a castle and you can live in a castle your first year. Um, I work on the second floor. So, you know, when you're headed to your class, wave hello as you walk downstairs. Um, and the first floor is used for different public events and networking events and fun, um, uh, just fun get to, get to know you events. Um, so I would say that the cast, having a castle is our, our special or unique thing. So um, there are kind of two different pieces. I'll play off of this one. Uh, we were an orphanage when we first started out. So Francis Hall is one of our really uh, cool and unique buildings on campus. It might not be a castle, but it was an orphanage. Um, and up until a few years ago, there were still some like remaining orphanage um, design factors in the building yet. So um, the bathrooms had like these little tubs in it for the kids when, when they would um, have like bath time and all of this stuff. So it's a really, it was a really cool um, uh, space, but it unfortunately wasn't able to be used <laughs> until it was renovated. Um, and then all of our students that do attend uh, will graduate with a service learning and real world learning experience um, because we do require uh, community service to graduate. Um, and we also are really encouraging that real world learning um, for all of our students, whether your major is English, uh, biology, engineering, healthcare science, communications, anything. Um, all of our students do graduate with one of those. I'm trying to think of uh, an interesting building fact uh, uh, at Albright. Um, there's definitely some old buildings. Um, uh, Albright is the uh, the oldest um, institution of higher learning in Berks County, but that's, I can't think of, I mean, we've not had orphanages um, or castles, um, but uh, we do sit on the side of a mountain. Um, so I guess that's kind of cool. It's really pretty in the fall. Um, but as far as um, unique and, and kind of exciting things, um, I think uh, one of the coolest um, one of the coolest things that we do here is you're going to have to complete 16 what are called experience events by the time that you graduate. Um, and so this is just a really neat opportunity to get you out of your comfort zone a little bit um, and get you to explore um, some different uh, kinds of areas of, of, of learning that you haven't previously. So. If you're, uh, if you're really into biology, maybe you'll go see a music performance or something like that. Um, but that gives you a really unique opportunity to um, kind of expand your comfort zone. Um, and, and, and because it's a requirement, um, you'll, you'll actually go and do it. Whereas sometimes um, you think you'll go and try new things, but if, 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 if you don't have to, um, a lot of times that falls by the wayside. So that is a requirement to graduate. Um, and uh, the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles used to hold their um, spring training on uh, Albright's campus in the 70s. Um, so I guess that's kind of cool and, and, and unique. And they play tonight and they're gonna whoop the Giants. So that's where we're at. <laughs> Go birds, I love it. Uh, so that seems like the end of the questions. Um, 
thank you all for coming out and joining us tonight and listening. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions that you might have um, for either Mark, Travis, or myself. Uh, so with that, Julie, I will pass it off to you. Awesome. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, thank you, Chelsea, Mark, um, and Travis. That was a, certainly an informative session um, for me as a high school counselor on the other side of the state. It's fun to hear more about each of your respective schools, so I appreciate that. Um, uh, again, let me go ahead and quickly share my screen um, so that we can um, just do a quick wrap up. Um, Perhaps I could share my screen. We'll see. There we go. Oh, no. Nope. Let's go back. All right. <laughs> Thank you um, again for joining us. Thank you to our panelists. Um, more sessions, as I said before, are available at pacact.org slash virtual. Um, and again, the recording will also be available at pacact.org slash virtual. Um, thank you to the folks at PACAC for organizing this and of course Scan, um, supporting the session and the recordings. And I hope that everyone has a great day. Take care. <laughs>